Mystery of the Wax Museum from 1933 was just a great film. It's sort of a mystery monster film set around a creepy wax museum. In a lot of ways, it could be considered like a follow-up film to Dr. X, because it featured the same director and many of the same stars as well, including Lionel Atwill in the lead. It's also the last film to feature the Technicolor two-strip color process. The story opens up. It's London in 1921. It's a rainy night, and we cut to the Wax Museum. Yep, creepy right from the start because, well, you know, wax museums are just creepy. And Lionel Atwill plays, it's pronounced Ivan Igor. Even though it looks like Ivan Igor, it's pronounced Igor. And yeah, I can't hear that and not think about Marty Feldman's character from Young Frankenstein. No, it's pronounced Igor. Well, Igor is <laughs> running the wax museum. He's sporting a cool beard and it's, you can see that he's hard at work on his wax sculptures here. His friend, Dr. Rasmussen, played by Holmes Herbert, shows up, along with an investor, Mr. Galatane, who's played by Claude King. He gives him a tour of the museum, including wax figures that you probably wouldn't find at, say, the Branson Wax Museum, like a statue of Voltaire. Yeah, Voltaire, woo! Anyhow, Mr. Galatane is impressed and offers to submit his work to the Royal Academy when he returns. So they leave, and Igor strikes up a conversation with Marie Antoinette, the wax figure, because, you know, that's not weird or anything. Well, Igor's museum partner, Joe Wirth, shows up. He's played by Edwin Maxwell. And we can see he's annoyed that the museum isn't making money. And he actually proposes burning it down to collect fire insurance money. Well, Igor clearly is not too jazzed with that idea. I mean, come on, he's in the habit of talking to his statues. Well, partner says, let me show you how easily it can be done. And he starts a sculpture on fire. It starts driving Igor crazy. The two of them get into a big fight. All the while, the fire is raging around them. And it's actually a really cool sequence as this museum burns. It looks great, especially when the freaky wax figures start to collapse and melt. And we're barely 10 minutes into the film at this point. It's great stuff. Igor is injured and knocked out, and his partner leaves the burning building, presumably leaving him for dead. Cut ahead 12 years. Happy New Year! It's 1933. Everyone is out yelling and screaming and having a big party in the street. And at the same time, apparently a suicide has taken place of a famous model, Joan Gale. At the city morgue, we find out that her body is being stolen by a creepy disfigured guy who grabs a body, lowers it out a window to be taken away. Well, reporter Florence Dempsey, played here by Glenda Farrell, is assigned by her editor, Jim, to get on this story. Jim was played by Frank McHugh, who I recently caught in the movie The Roaring Twenties with James Cagney, in that he was playing this doughy John Favreau looking guy. Well, anyhow, he's the editor here. He assigns her to the story to figure out what's going on with the suicide. Florence is roommates with Charlotte, played by the lovely Faye Ray, and they banter about relationships and so on. Charlotte's fiance, Ralph, played by Alan Vincent, just happens to work for Igor at the museum, and Igor is basically a perfectionist jerk to him. You know, here he is, hard at work doing a sculpture, and this Igor tells him that he has no talent. And he's not exactly the best boss, I guess. Well, around this time, Charlotte shows up to meet with her friend, and Igor sees her and flips out, thinking she looks a lot like an old wax figure he has made before. Yeah, red flag here, Florence. Uh, he asks her to model someday, and she agrees. You know, that's probably not going to go well. Anyway, it's noteworthy that Igor employs several creepy fellows. He has Professor Darcy, who's played by actor Arthur Karu. Thank you again, my few fans, for helping with my pronunciation. I really do appreciate it. I'm learning, you know. I'll probably never get these names perfect. Anyhow, he was also in the film Dr. X, along with Lionel Atwell. He was one of the oddball medical students in that film. Well, here he's a drug addict working at the museum. And remember, this is a pre-code movie, so they could get away with stuff like that. And there's also the character Hugo, who is a deaf mute. He's played by Matthew Betts. Florence heads back to her editor. She is certain there's something fishy going on at this wax museum. 
And I, I really love the quick and witty banter that goes on. It's sort of the, the vibe of like Rosalind Russell from His Girl Friday, you know, the quick zingers, you know. She'll say things like, well, you can go some nice warm place, and I don't mean California. Yeah, stuff like that. It's great. Anyhow, she's got this zany idea that someone at the museum is taking casts of dead people, but the editor just doesn't buy it. But she is determined. So opening night comes, and Igor is showing the guests around to the various wax figures. And by the way, this doesn't really look like a traditional wax museum. It almost looks like a department store to me, but hey, it's all good. He's got all these awesome figures of people like Napoleon and so on. Charlotte and Ralph show up, and of course, Igor is still thrilled to see her, you know. Florence, meanwhile, follows Darcy back and snoops around the place she sees him go into. And while snooping, sees this creepy disfigured guy walk into the room. Now she's hiding and he doesn't see her. And he kind of comes in, moves a coffin and then leaves. So as soon as she can get out of there, she runs off to her editor who happens to be nearby talking with some police. So the editor and her and all these police officers bust into the house. The legality of it I wonder about, but hey, it's the 1930s, I guess they can do things like that. They go searching around, trying to snoop around and find out what's going on here, but they find nothing. Florence is insistent, though. A little later, Charlotte goes to visit Ralph at the museum, only to encounter Igor, and here, near the end of the film, the big reveal finally happens. And I will say no more, don't want to give away spoilers, only that the ending was very exciting. Will the detectives capture the elusive monster? Will Charlotte survive? Will Florence get her headline story? Well, you gotta watch the movie to find out for yourself. Now, some closing thoughts. This was a very good follow-up to Dr. X from 1932. It was also directed by Michael Curtiz and starred many of the same actors, like Lionel Atwill, Faye Ray, Arthur Carew, and so on. And like Dr. X, a credit to Michael Curtiz, I like how this is a horror mystery film but he blends in just the right amount of humor and silliness into it to kind of take the edge off just enough. And like Dr. X, this was done at the same time, like I mentioned before, with that Technicolor two-strip process. So even though the film kind of feels like a black and white movie, it's got these eerie hues of orange and green, maybe more so blue in this particular film. And again, that just lends to the creepy feeling of this film, particularly the morgue. And I believe they use the same morgue set from Dr. X. So there's a little familiarity to it. And I do believe this was the last time they used that Technicolor two-strip process in this particular film. And yes, it needs to be noted, this is pre-code. So there is just a little bit of spicy dialogue, which would be PG by today's standards and some references to drug addiction, and also a few spooky images, but really nothing too bad. I would say reluctantly all ages, you know, a little creepiness to it. This was remade 20 years later as House of Wax with Vincent Price, and I'd like to check that out someday as well. So I'm adding that to my list that I hope to get to. Mystery of the Wax Museum from 1933. This was a great film, it was a lot of fun, and it's worth checking out. <laughs>